Located on the Slovenian Istria Peninsula is the city of Piran. Recognizable by its red roofs, long piers, and Venetian architecture, Piran is a beautiful coastal city that seemingly floats above the Adriatic Sea. Once an Italian town, is now transformed post-World War II to embrace Slovenian culture and heritage. While walking through the narrow stone-paved streets, you'll be met with the perfect intertwining of both cultures and histories. In this video, we'll bring you guys along to this hidden gem of Slovenia as the ultimate day trip from anywhere in the country. From climbing high up to the famed clock tower, to enjoying a decadent coffee in Tartini Square, Piran is a truly unique town in Slovenia. Good morning from Piran. It's been raining the past couple of days here in Slovenia, but fortunately this morning the skies completely opened up, revealing a beautiful day. We're going to be exploring this coastal city and taking you guys along some of the best things you can do here in Piran. We begin our morning here at the waterfront promenade where you can see into the Adriatic Sea as well as the city of Piran. It's just so nice hearing the waves crash against the rocks. It's just such a beautiful day as Lauren mentioned. So our game plan right now is to walk around the promenade before we head into the inner city. All around the promenade that outlines the Piran Peninsula, you can actually dip in for a swim. They actually have the bars and steps that indicate where you can go in. It's pretty neat and there's actually a lady behind me that's already going swimming. I don't know if walking along the promenade early in the morning in late October is the best idea. As you can see, that's the promenade and you can see the waves crashing up. Kind of see Lauren over there just playing with the water, dodging the waves. You also see a bunch of stuff being washed up on shore, like rocks, seaweed, and stuff like that. I think we'll come back a little bit later in the afternoon when we can actually walk along it. Since the tide is really high right now, we thought to get up higher, and one of the highest points in Piran is the St. George Church. St. George is the patron saint of the city thought to have saved Piran from a violent storm. So we're going to go up and check out this beautiful church and while walking along it, we can check out this cool graffiti wall. While the church looks really cool, what is probably more recognizable is actually the clock tower that sits right beside it. I think the doors just open at 10 a.m. I think it costs two euros per person. It's 146 steps. So we're gonna go head up there and get a great view over the entire city. The stairway is pretty narrow, but it looks like it was recently constructed and it's all wooden. So it's really easy to step up and at every corner pretty much of the staircase, you'll see names of different archangels and it looks like they're going up in rank. <laughs> because we're the first ones up here, the lady told us to open up the door ourselves. So now we're the ones doing the opening. <laughs> but we're going to leave it for the next guest. I noticed a resemblance between this bell tower and the bell tower in San Marco Square in Venice. And that's because the Phoenicians actually ruled Peron for about half a millennia. The architecture is so akin to what you see in Venice too, like the white stone, the terracotta roofs of the city. Now this bell tower is a lot smaller, so you can maybe put like 20 to 30 people max up here. So we're so glad that we're the only ones and the first ones up here to enjoy the view. I 
and right down there you can see Tartini Square, which is an amazing place to go and hang out. Tons of restaurants and cafes, and that's where we're gonna go and grab a cup of coffee. Cheers. Cheers to our morning coffee. Oh yeah. That was much needed. We're at Gijola. It's this little cafe that sits right on the edge of Tartini Square and you have a completely unobstructed view of it and the Campanile or bell tower right behind us. And with our cappuccinos, we also got these really cute little wafer cookies. I honestly feel like almost every single coffee shop should start giving some of these out along with their coffee. We were on our way towards the city walls when we came across this monastery, which is the Church of St. Francis of Assisi. And it's just so beautiful inside. You have these beautiful white marble, and then you can just see right with the bell tower front and center. And that's actually one of the top things that you can do here as well. There are a ton of different monasteries and churches, so you can go around and visit them all. We just made it into Piran's old city wall. It's crazy. These walls were built periodically over about a thousand years. And of course, like the bell tower, it is very narrow of these steps that we have to climb up. But once we get up there, I think it'd be really cool to see this piece of history along with the views of the city. Good thing I'm not too tall. This is way too narrow. What? Oh. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. Give me the camera. I'm not gonna make it. Let's go on without me. Let's just leave him here. Walking along these city walls really reminds us of when we did the same thing in Dubrovnik. But there are two main differences. Firstly, in Dubrovnik, it does look a lot better. You're a lot closer to the city as opposed to here where you're actually quite far away. But the second part is the price difference. In Dubrovnik, you will pay 35 euros versus here, you only pay three. That is a substantial difference and you still get a pretty amazing view. And with that, we've worked up an appetite for lunch, so we're gonna be walking back into town in search of some seafood, which is the go-to here, especially since we're right on the coast of the Adriatic Sea. Ooh. I'm gonna try not to drool because my mouth is salivating so much looking at this and smelling it. We've got a whole combination of Grilled squid, fried squid, white bait, stuffed fried olives, french fries, and tartar sauce, and some bread, some toasted bread to accompany it. So beyond excited. Everything looks so good. I think I'm gonna go for the fried calamari right here. It has to be so long since we had calamari. It just hits the spot. So nicely fried. Not oily goodness. They look a little bit crazy. When they're so crispy and have this natural saltiness from the little fish itself. I think this is white bait, not too sure, but whatever it is, delicious. We are back where we started this morning at the Waterfront Promenade. As you can see behind us, the tide has definitely receded. And this makes it a great time for us to walk around the promenade and end our time here in Peron. But we have one more spot that's an hour away from Peron that we wanted to check out, especially since we drove here this morning for our day trip, and it's called Red Yama Castle. This is something straight out of a fantasy movie. 
Pariyama Castle is built right in the mouth of a cave sometime in the 12th century. This Renaissance castle it just reminds me of some fairy tale offlandish area. I can't believe this is right in the middle of Slovenia. So you can pay to go inside of a castle, but if you didn't want to, you can actually take a little walking path that leads you right down to the base of the castle. And it's so cool seeing it from below.